Good morning, gentlemen. And uh, this was, let me just begin with you, a very short remarks with regards to the late Dismas. What do you remember him most for? You said the late Dismas. <laughs> Sorry, Kavemba Mutinda. <laughs> yeah. yep. Sorry for that. Yeah, no. I've known Kavemba for about uh, 10 years. Mm. The two of us were part of a presidential campaign mm -hmm. where I was uh, responsible for communications mm -hmm. and he was in charge of uh, youth mobilization. So I've known him for about uh, 11 years. And one thing which sticks out uh, about Kavemba is that uh, he never defended impunity, mediocrity and corruption mm -hmm. in whichever political formation he found himself in. And I think during the run-up to the last uh, election, I think he was aligned uh, with uh, Jubilee. And he's one of those uh, few analysts who said that uh, if there is impunity, mediocrity, and uh, corruption mm -hmm. resident in uh, Jubilee or during the party primaries or within the rank and file, he never ever defended them. Mm -hmm. And he was very solid. And majority of Kenyans may not know that in fact he graduated as a teacher but managed to weave his way into politics. Mm -hmm. And he got elected as a councillor in Umoja, fresh from uh, Maseno University. Yes. And uh, he understood uh, the Kenyan political space very well. And after the campaigns, when uh, he decided, after the two, uh, 2007 campaigns, when he decided to join uh, active politics and I went to advisory, mm -hmm. he gave me a lot of advice. He actually made me understand real politics, especially in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. He's a solid gentleman. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason as to why I said this was is because Mutinda Delet, you know, used to sit next to you most of the time. Yes. Sorry for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mark? Um, you know, the, there's a statement that he just said, uh, mm -hmm. even in the clips that I just read, and um, no one is above uh, the law. Mm -hmm. And privately, he would always tell me that, Mark, I'm never going to go on TV and defend the indefensible. Mm -hmm. and, and he stuck to, true to that principle throughout the electioneering period. In fact, uh, for me, it was quite consoling to always see him in the panel because I knew exactly where he stands and, and, and I knew he was not willing to compromise no matter how uh, much pressure he would receive mm -hmm. to bend one side or the other. He was a man of principle. He was a man of his word. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he was a very jovial and, and, and happy person and he, he had a clear crisp mind and his ideas were crystallized and he had laser focus on the things that he wanted uh, to do. I mm -hmm. think, uh, of course, I feel sad for the family, I feel sad for, for this particular panel, but I feel even more sad for Nairobi mm -hmm. because they've lost a chief officer who was uh, quite competent, quite dedicated, and I can tell you for free that he had the heart of Nairobi mm -hmm. uh, uh, square in, in his vision and therefore it is with great sadness that I mourn the reality that I will never share a panel with Mutinda Kavemba again. Rest in peace, my friend. Hezbon? Well, uh, I think enough has been said about Mutinda as far as uh, his political prowess is concerned. And uh, to me, I think that is uh, something that he'll be remembered for, that he was very intelligent very candid and articulate, and I think one of the few political analysts who actually had an in-depth understanding, not just of the theoretical political issues, but the terrain of politics in Nairobi and Kenya generally. And uh, I think uh, he articulated issues from a very objective and intelligent point of view that most of us, you know, mm -hmm. still admire for that. But I think I, I shared a lot with Mutinda, given that uh, we went through the same university and. When he learned that I also went through Maseno University, I think he took me in his arms and there are a few things that he would tell me off air that uh, made me you know, understand many things about TV, politics, and how to handle issues. Uh, but most importantly, and this is something that uh, maybe people who know him as a politician don't understand, I think I came to understand Mutin as a great family man, someone who valued uh, family values and I think at this time I'm not even thinking about politics I'm just thinking about his family mm -hmm. and what they're going through yes and for his family and his close friends uh, what I would pray for is that uh, the great Lord grant them that peace that surpasses all human understanding because I know how difficult mm -hmm. it is well said as one keep it's hard to mourn Wakili, sorry, we have a problem with your sound there, but of course you're going to say a word later in the program, I promise you uh, for that. And uh, at the same uh, breath, of course, we 
pray for the family and friends of the Let Mutinda, a great loss for this country, as some of the panelists here have already uh, mentioned. And uh, it's a great loss, you know. People are still trying to come to terms uh, with the loss of this great individual. An astute uh, politician has already uh, mentioned that is a great loss indeed. But we'll still have to continue with our discussions uh, this morning. As I've already outlined some of the topics that we're going to discuss. But first, here is the political pages. Well, before I look at the splash on the Sunday Standard, Ali, we had a problem with the uh, sound of Wakili here, Kipchumba. I think, Wakili, now your sound is sorted. Maybe you can just say a word very briefly. To the family, to the people of Nairobi County, where I served as a, as a chief officer, and to the great nation. Mm -hmm. And finally, to the family of the Sunday edition, where I was a regular contributor. Mm -hmm. We ask the Almighty to rest his peace in eternal, in eternal place and may the perpetual light shine on his way. And may he join the, the man who went before him, Professor Eric. Mm -hmm. We both we pray for both of them. Now let's go straight to the uh, Sunday standard this morning. The splash has everything to do with the maze uh, scandal. They are posing a question. Car cover up, bad maze may land on your plate. And the story here says that fresh tests on maize already declared and fit for human consumption uh, uh, are raising eyebrows with industry players alleging a cover up plot by top government officials to have the maize back on Kenya's uh, Kenyans' dinner tables. Now, investigations by the Sunday Standard show that government operatives are jittery uh, over the recommendations by top state uh, testing facilities to have the maize destroyed. You can get this story in detail on the Sunday Standard uh, this morning, where they've done a thorough job, I must say. And uh, this comes just uh, a few, you know, weeks after we've had that uh, tough uh, talking president, uh, you know, speaking to the uh, agriculture cabinet secretary, saying that he should put his house in order. This must, let me begin with you. We've been talking about poisonous sugar and now poisonous maize. Crisis in the agriculture space in Kenya. And uh, it's a pity that we keep on talking about uh, food security in Kenya when we are not able to take care of uh, the basics. Of course, there's a crisis in the maize sector. And now it seems that uh, there are some top uh, operatives who want us to consume uh, maize, which may be not favorable for human consumption. But the question that uh, arises is, who in the first instance allowed uh, this maize to come to Kenya? And then uh, if the maize came to Kenya while it was uh, in a good state, how was it stored? And who was uh, responsible? Mm -hmm. And in as much as we'll be getting all these uh, funny, misleading, and ac unacceptable headlines about uh, sugar crisis, about a maize crisis, there's nobody who's been held responsible. The architects of uh, this mischief are dancing all the way to the bank every mm -hmm. single day, buying top of the range vehicles. And as Mark Bichach has been saying lately, they're now enjoying uh, single malt whiskey and pepper steak at the expense of Kenyans. Does it mean that Mwangi Kyunjuri has no idea of what is happening at his ministry? Does it mean that uh, his uh, principal secretaries have no idea? And assuming it's the case that the CS and the PS I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Does it also mean that President Kenyatta has no idea of what is happening? Because now there's a very high probability that poisonous food is going to be released to the Kenyan market. Mm -hmm. And unsuspecting Mora and Wanjiko and Wafula and Anyango are going to consume this maize. Then they fall sick, they get into complications around cancer, and then we'll be struggling to treat this cancer. Why can't we? take a firm decision of the relevant agencies, go through this food, go through the, I mean, the maize and sugar, and give us an expert view that this food is suitable for consumption, then we consume. If it's not suitable, then we destroy it. We take it to maybe Urupak mm -hmm. and you know, set it all on fire 
Why should the government expose Kenyans to this kind of uh, mischief at the expense of uh, profits? You know, this is, these are some of the things which only happen in a country that uh, Donald Trump has got an acceptable terms. Mm -hmm. Donald has referred to African countries in a manner that you cannot repeat on this uh, national program, but these are very clear indication that government officers know this food is poisonous and they're about to release it to the market. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm beginning to wonder, these officers who are about to release this food to the market, do they stay in Kenya or they stay in Utopia? Do they have relatives who are going to consume this food? Or do they've got enough uh, medical facilities somewhere where they're going to be treating these people? Mm -hmm. And in my view, this is the right time for President Kenyatta to implement his uh, long-awaited reshuffle mm -hmm. so that we get solid officials in place. And maybe this is also the right time for President Kenyatta to appoint a commission of inquiry to go into this uh, sugar crisis. You see now the headline, top uh, officers have been flown to Mombasa quietly mm -hmm. because these guys want them to reverse the decision. We're having a, a, a maze crisis and people are, that are khaki, money in khaki envelopes is uh, changing hands. Mm -hmm. Why can't the president appoint a commission of inquiry to investigate this, even if it means now getting foreigners? Because now we don't seem to trust uh, our Kenyans. Mm -hmm. This is sad. It goes against uh, the president's big four agenda of uh, food security. How can you have food security when you're killing these industries, when you're al allowing people from everywhere to import substandard maize? Mm -hmm. If this happened in uh, some other countries, people would have resigned. If it happened in uh, Britain, people would have resigned. It's yet to happen. But in yeah. Kenya, what mm -hmm. are we doing? Mm -hmm. We're just dancing and breaking into a song. Yes. Mark, do you, th do you think it's about time we see heads rolling? Because if you look at this article, it says about 4.4 million bags of bad maize in NCPB silos uh, are already, you know, in different silos across the country. And this maze may just find itself, you know, into our, into our tables because there are cover-ups and there are a lot of things that are happening that, you know, most Kenyans know nothing about. It is only in conspiracy theory YouTube videos that you can even imagine a government uh, p p uh, pretending and pretending to want to poison its own people. 4.4 million bags of maize is too much. This is uh, a scene straight from the uh, pages of a book called Hell. It is uh, worse than uh, an inferno because what we're releasing on the Kenyan people is a self-styled crisis, a crisis that does not only affect health, it affects our economy because if we're going to lose this maize, it is five billion shillings plus that is being lost. It is the food security pillar of the president. It is the health of Kenyans, it is more money even lost trying to lead to, 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 to deal with liver disease and cancers. It's, 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 it's a gift that keeps on giving except it's a horrible gift for the Kenyan people to receive. Mm -hmm. But what is worse and what is worrying to me is then it tells me that officials in this country have no respect for the president. It tells me that the president has no power in effecting his policy within his own ministries. Uh, for me, if I told my house help, pika chakulambaya tena tutonana, mm -hmm. and then one week later they have 4.4 million bags of bad food, then they would not still not have a job. If one month later there, there is still someone whether he's in charge of the silos or the person who makes sure of the quality standards in the silos, how they still have a job today, mm -hmm. that tells you there's no respect for the president. If anyone who inspected this uh, maze and then allowed it to continue existing uh, is still in office, there's a problem. If anyone is trying to cover this up and they're still in office, there's a problem. And those are the issues that we must begin to deal with. Mm -hmm. That incompetence cannot continue to be wished away. We cannot continue to live in a country where Kebs says this maze is bad. Now, Unless we are saying Kebs is incompetent, then why does Kebs exist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Because if you think it's incompetent, you are the head of state, get rid of it, okay? It, yeah. But also, in my own house, mm -hmm. if I find a cockroach on top of the, of the flower, we throw it away, a cockroach, mm -hmm. okay? Now, here we have a flotoxins, okay? Uh, going to kill Kenyans, and we are debating whether to keep it or not. This is the problem with mm -hmm. this country. This is why the same mentality is the mentality that we saw people stealing oil from a fallen container the other day. Because for us, profit over everything. Someone packed their expensive uh, SUV on the side of the road to go steal 1,000 shillings worth of oil. This is the problem with our country. Mr. President, if you can hear me, mm -hmm. fire everybody who's touched this thing, fire everybody who's trying to cover it up and give this country a clean break. Hesborn, this was talked about the need to have a commission of inquiry, right?
into yes. the maize yes. sector. There was an internal audit, this report says, that was conducted at NCPB, which was letter tabled in Parliament, and it indicated that silo managers ignored basic regulation, regulations on maize purchase. And that's why we're having a lot of you know, problems in, the, in this sector. Do you think it's about time we need to see heads rolling in this area? Well, I, I think it's, it's, <coughs> it's about time. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's about time, and I think... Uh, you don't even need a commission of inquiry. If 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 a standard media group mm -hmm. can have a journalist who does a good job like this, and and, and uh, everything is in black and white, we know who is responsible. We know the people who are responsible for trying to water down this report by mm -hmm. cabs. Uh, we know that this is not an issue of agriculture. This is an issue of unscrupulous traders who imported maize that is not fit for human consumption. We know that in our silos we have 4.4 million bags of maize that can kill. I, I don't think we, we, we need to overemphasize the fact that heads need to roll. Mm -hmm. Now, President Uru Kenyatta, uh, in the recent past, said that time for jokes is over. Look for those stealing public resources, bring them, we take them to jail. Mm -hmm. You will find yourselves in trouble over this issue. Uh, of course, he was addressing the, the, the cabinet secretary, mm -hmm. if he doesn't deal with the issue. And I think it's, it's, it's in black and white that there are people who are responsible. Uh, the report has indicated what they are responsible for. So it is just a question of the law taking its course and the investigative agencies taking this story further and apprehending the people who are responsible. If, mm -hmm. if, if a journalist, you know, who is acting in the interest of the public with his own resources from the media house can do this, I think our investigators who are paid quite a lot of money to they investigate, should do a better job. They should do a better job. Mm -hmm. Yes. Kipchumba? The president must choose what he wants to pursue mm -hmm. as a person. He cannot talk of the big four and health being part of it. And then we turn around and realize that some of the officials in the government are mm -hmm. perpetuating what might cost mm -hmm. us more. Well, Kili, I think we have a problem with your audio once again. Apologies. Mm -hmm. It seems we're having a bad <laughs> Sunday with you. But mm -hmm. of course, we're going to give you time. Mm -hmm. I, I promise that. And uh, on that note, we're going to take a very short break. Of course, you're watching.